Welcome. In this presentation we're going to be looking at how we can use complex numbers to solve a parallel circuit. So we've got this circuit here and by using complex numbers we say actually why we like complex numbers in electrical engineering because they can make things a lot lot easier to solve. So what we're going to do with this circuit is we're going to find out to what the actual impedance of this circuit is as you look into it. So we've got a capacitor here, we've got a resistor and we've got an inductor. In fact, that uh, react, uh, resistor, I use uh, the letter R for, for resistance, by the way, not, the, not that symbol, generally speaking. That's co totally correct, by the way, that is the SI unit. It's just that in electrical engineering electronics, we tend to use R because it's, it's, it's a key on your keyboard for it, on your computer. So it's a lot easier to, to do, to type in. So we tend to use R for ohms particularly around resistors. Not so much for the impedance that we all find of this and the impedance we'll find of this, though you can do. Okay, so we're gonna work out, get back to the subject, what the impedance is of that circuit and from that, using Ohm's law, and that voltage, we can work out what current's being drawn. We can also use complex numbers to find the uh, current ac across that inductor sorry, through that inductor and the current through that inductor. Okay, so let's have a look. So the first thing we need to do is work out what the impedance of these two components are. So for example, to find the impedance, the reactance, we call it, we use it X for the capacitor, it's one over, we put a J out front for complex numbers because it's going to be a, the answer is going to be complex, and you need to see my other videos to to, uh, to understand that. Incidentally, if you can't do complex numbers, this video is going to be a bit difficult to follow, so you need to watch my videos on complex numbers first. But anyway, so J represents a complex number. We use J in, in engineering because I is used for uh, for current, so we tend to use J. And anyway, it's two pi f times the capacitance. So the reactance, that's the resistance of flow of current, gets less as the frequency goes up or the capacitor value goes up. And we use that in electronics for filtering and all sorts of other applications. Okay, so if I put the numbers in, so f's 100, I've not got a lot of space, so I'm not going to write everything out. Frequency is 100, 100 hertz, the, uh, the capacitance is 80 microfarad, that's 80 times uh, times 10 to the minus 6. That will give me an answer of 1 over, I'll, I'll write it in and then I'll come back and explain what I've done there. 0 0.0503. Now if I go to completion with that, that would actually give me I think it's about just under 20 ohms impedance because I need to finish this final part. Now there's a reason I'm going to leave it like that and hopefully you'll follow me, follow me uh, why and the argument, the case for this XL is uh, J again, 2 pi, the frequency and the inductor value. Okay, so the same thing, you've got the, that's your frequency and the inductance is 145 millihenries. Okay, so that time 10 min minus 3. Oh, uh, zero. just move the decimal point on three places if you wish. And the answer to that one is, looking at my notes, 91, 1062. 91.1062. Okay, so that's the ohmic value resistance of that, and that would be when I finish it. Okay, so that's that bit done. So that's the that's the reactance of that, the reactance of that, the reactance of that is 100 ohms. Uh, it's all to do with the change of phase angle and things to, um, that we have to take into account, and that's where the frequency comes in. Okay, so the next step is how do we add uh, things together in parallel? Uh, if you've got two resistors in parallel, if you've got resistors in series, or impedances in series, it's got uh, Z1 plus Z2, you just add them together. So you get Z1 plus Z2. 
if they're in parallel, we have to add them in the inverse. So for example, this circuit, which is what we've got here basically, at the end of the day, uh, would be, so that if that's Z1, Z2, we would add them like this. Z total would be uh, 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2. Okay? When you get that answer, you get an answer that's 1 over Z, them added together. Let's just put add in. And then you have to invert it, so you have to do the, uh, use the inverse key on your calculator, or just 1 divided by that answer. And that gives you the final answer, so you have to swap it over, in other words, to get ZT. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. I'm not going to go over the, that's your basics, so I'm not going to go over that. Okay, so what we've got in this, so applying that principle to this and treating these like complex numbers, so this is an imaginary part, this is a real part, imaginary, we've got this, so we've got 1 over z, so now we equal, so the, uh, uh, this part is 1 over now this is why, why I've done this. So normally it would be, remember I said it was about 20 ohms, so it'd be 1 over 20. But you're going to then invert it, so then that's going to go back and become that. So what that means is, it would be uh, 1 over, 1 over, 0, 5, 0, 3. So hopefully I've not lost you there, and I've got to be honest, I do lose a lot of students at this stage. Okay. Let's say that's 20. If I've got, and you can see it's not far off actually, that 0 0.03, it's just going to be slightly out. Um, if, I, if I put 20 under there, okay, and then I do that, I'm going to get uh, 0 0.05 as an answer. So, why bother at all? Why, why solve that one and then solve it back again? Why not just take that value there and stick that in, in the first place? I hope you follow me there. If you don't, just do it the long way. Hopefully you, you follow that. So it's going to be that part of the circuit added together with this part of the circuit. So it's going to be 1 over... So it's Z1 plus Z2 we're doing in effect. This is Z1, this is Z2. This one is 100. So remember I said one million series, you add them up. You just simply add them up. So it's 100 plus, and then, by the way, that's a J term. So that's going to be J there. And it's going to be this value here, 91 point uh, I'm just going to say one, one there, round it to two decimal places. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do my maths with. So I'm now going to solve this, get this to the top. Double inversion brings it to the top. Uh, a number divided by a fraction brings the bottom uh, denominator to the top. So I've now got this. Okay, hopefully you followed me, what, how I got there. So that is my two values added together, uh, 1 over z values added together. So uh, 1 divided by this, so I'm dividing by a complex number I'm in rectangle, it's a rectangle form. And remember, so we use the conjugate. And again, if you haven't watched the videos on complex numbers or you can't do complex numbers, it'll mean nothing to you. So what we've got here is 1 over z is 0 0.0503 plus, so it's 1 over 100 plus j91.11 times the conjugate of this, which is the same numbers with the opposite sign, so 100 uh, minus j91.11 
0.11 but I can't just multiply it on the bottom I've got to multiply it by the top to keep it balanced using our rules of maths and that will lead me to so this bit here and obviously you would have to, if you remember when you multiply out the conjugate you get it removes the, um, the, the imaginary term and you get left with a real number only so doing this bit, so this is the first bit's that bit there and then this part is uh, that multiplying that gives me a real number and then on the top I've got a hundred minus j 91.11 so let me look at my notes and then I'll explain myself a bit better hopefully so this part here multiplying would give me 1 times that is simply 100 plus uh, minus rather so that's your top bit multiplying that times that gives me 100 minus j91.11 and the bottom term when I multiply that by that I get left with a real number only remember I said that which happens to be 18 1300.34 okay so I'm uh, and then I'm going to split that up as a common denominator so I've now got under here and under here sorry not under here okay under them two terms I've got uh, a biggest number to fit in it's uh, 183 zero zero point three four and same goes under this one as a common denominator one eight three zero zero point three four hopefully you can see that on the camera in the video okay so the next step so that's one over z equals well the next step actually before we get to that is that now I take this real part so this is a real part and that's a, sorry that's a real part and that's real so these two terms are real that one and that one so I can simply add them together so a calculator job adding that to that because I'm you do well if you know what 100 divided by 108 uh, 18300.34 is that's an imaginary part, there's nothing to add to that. So I have, um, I've gone cuckoo. Right, so this is an, a J term. So it's not the real terms we're adding. It's the imaginary terms we're adding. Imaginary. Is added to that one. So we add them together, okay? And I say it's a calculator job. Add them together. I have it here. The answer to that. Let's get me. So that's the real part, okay? So the real part is a horrible number because it's so long. 5464. Four. So that's the real part of this part so far. And these two added together, that and that added together is 0 0.04533. Okay. So I'm going to recap what I've just done because it I can, I can feel you getting lost. I can feel you thinking, what's he on about? So we had, we worked out firstly the impedance of the capacitor, the reactance of the capa capacitor and the reactance of the inductors. We put them together in this one over Z formula. So that's that part, that's the Z1 added together with Z2. We've called this Z2. Z's impedance, by the way. X is reactance 
Reactance is part of what goes into the impedance. Impedance is the resistance. This is, this is um, you could say, it's part of that uh, impedance of the circuit Z. Um, so I ended up with the, these numbers to do the crunching of. Remember how I'd have to double invert that so to get that to the top. It would have been 1 over 20 and then invert it, you get 1 over 0, 5. Hopefully you followed that. Then I've done my conjugate approach to this and that's give me that part there. That's the result of that, 1 divided by that using the conjugate method. So you need to watch the videos on that. So then I've got this imaginary number, which I keep forgetting to put the J in. Added the two imaginary parts are added together because they're like terms, so you just add them together and that gives me that. And this one here, where's this weird thing come from? Um, sorry, it's come from this. It's come from 100 divided by 183000.34 and that's given me that renders number there. So that gives me 1 over Z. Now, we're not quite there yet. We're nearly there. Don't lose hope. There's, um, this is to the 1 over Z. So what we've got to do to find Z is we have to in, invert this again. Okay, so in other words, let's put a therefore in. Therefore, Z equals 1 over this number, basically. 0 0.005464 plus J 0 0.04533. Okay, which means, sadly, doing the conjugate of this again, like we did before, and getting the answer right. Before you go off and drink yourself to death or hang yourself, let me just make a little point here. This is from the notes. Because I'm going to show another method as well. But um, you could be excused for thinking either method, because I'm going to show another method, is long-winded maths. Yes, it is long-winded maths, so you're well excused, but not if you cheat. It's not cheating, uh, you use software. Now I used Wolfram Alpha, I don't know if you use that, WolframAlpha.com, just do your, use your point, your, the, your mouse at your favourite search engine and put Wolfram Alpha. So that's Wolf as in big dog, Ram as in the thing that they eat. Uh, Wolfram is the, uh, you're probably aware, is the is is the term, the Latin term for tungsten, the material, Wolfram. Alpha, that was in the first letter of the Greek alphabet, wolframalpha.com. Um, and you can put these equations in, you use the letter I, though I think it does use the letter, it will work with letter J, put the letter I in and hit enter and it gives you the result. And then you can put this in and it gives you the result. In fact, you can click on the result and then invert it by doing it to the power of minus one and it and uh, put it in brackets and do it in minus one and it gives you the answer very very easy to use uh, I've got a calculator that does complex numbers and that makes it easier as well so basically don't be too, don't be too worried um, just have a play around with something like Wolfram Alpha obviously if you've got if you've got specialized software like to, um, uh, like the stuff that won't come to mind but uh, MATLAB for example it has come to mind now if you've got that then you're probably very familiar with this kind of thing anyway so you're probably not watching this video but anyway so it make it easy so that answer anyway to get to the point is having give you that bit of good news after all that bad news ends up being this if I can fit this in 2.62 drop a decimal place there minus j 21.75 drop some decimal places there so that's the real part and that's the imaginary so when this voltage that goes across this circuit what it sees looking into there treating it like a black box is 
this real part and this imaginary that's the this, the result of that capacitor and that inductor working together if you remember they're out of phase with one another by 180 degrees so they tend to uh, slightly different method how it works with a parallel circuit to a in series but anyway they end up working against one another they end up cancelling out the values um, slightly varies uh, exactly what you get with a parallel but anyway so that is our what our circuit sees okay right now that's in rectangle form those of you who have watched the videos in the um, complex numbers will know that if you convert it to polar it can be more useful if I convert that to polar rather than rectangle I get 21 point nine zero five nine with a phase angle this is an impedance so phase angle is as I put it in one of my other uh, bits and notes it's actually like a mathematical convenience minus eighty three point one three that's in degrees rather than radians okay so that would tell us actually what the actual impedance might look like um, so the beauty of that is if I plotted that on a graph by the way we're doing it in Wolfram Alpha it would actually if you put this in it'll give you that answer and that automatically for free and it'll also give you this it'll give you a little plot because that's uh, 20, 21 long uh, 21.9 to 22 long let's say and it's an angle of 83 degrees in this direction because it's minus so it's down there like that and that would be 22 21.9 so that and that there is 83 degrees 83 it's a minus because it's going that way around 83.13 okay so it'll give you that on Wolfram for free there's a version of Wolfram you can pay for, um, but for mostly uh, what we're doing, you don't need that. Okay, it's great software though. I must, I must say, I'm a big fan. Okay, so that's the plot of it. So this would be your real axis, and this is your imaginary. Okay, and that length of that line would be 21.9 long. Okay, so that's give us the impedance of that circuit. From that, we can then work out a lot of information. Um, but before I get to that, let me just mention, I'm going to have to do some rubbing off here. Um, let's see, I'm going to stick up here my two results. 2.6 minus J 21.75 and the imaginary version of that is 21 point not imaginary sorry the uh, polar version uh, do I need all them numbers let's go like that phase angle is minus 83 so these are all the impedances of that circuit okay so I'll save them up. Now there's another way you could have done it, and I'll, I'm not going to do the maths, but I'm going to tell you the step um, very quickly, actually, so I don't want to confuse you anymore. Uh, the another way of adding two impedances, like Z1 and Z2, is when you've only got two impedances in parallel, there's a thing called the uh, product of, uh, the, the products over the sum rule. Okay so that basically is this uh, resistance total for example let's call, let's call it Z the impedance total is uh, Z1 times Z2 divided by Z1 plus Z2 and when you're doing it with resistors that's nice and easy because you've just got a couple of values like say 10 and 20 gives me 10 times 20 you know, is, uh, and so on divided by 30 and so on and so forth dead easy in our particular case, I say I'm not going to go through the maths, but it would end up being 
Uh, we call that. Uh, I've got it. Well, we have done it here. I've right, put an R. It's um, time. It's C. Not quite what, what I wanted there. X C times these two in parallel. So R plus X L divided by XC plus XL. Okay, so you've got these are complex numbers obviously. So that's got a J, that's got a J, and that's got a J, and that's got a J. Again, easy in Wolfram Alpha or in a good calculator or a good piece of software. And it'll give you the same answer. So if, you, if you're bored, you can't sleep, Try it, try it that way and see if you get the same answer. Okay, uh, apparently I did. I've put in my notes. Right, next part, if you haven't lost the will to live yet, is using this, because uh, you could be asked a question in a, in, in a question sheet that could say, um, Right, the current, this, right, you find, we've got the impedance, so from that we can find the current in the circuit. So using Ohm's law. I'm going to rub this bit out now. I think we've uh, seen enough of that. So Ohm's law says this, I in the circuit, okay, I won't put circuit, uh, supply, supply current is, using Ohm's law, it's the volts divided by the, by the impedance. So it's 100 divided by, we know uh, no phase angle at 100 volts because that's the usual reference. So that would be a phase angle of zero divided by this. So the, the easiest way, the best way by far actually is to do it in polar. See that video on that and you'll see why. Okay. So that divided by that in polar, that would be 100 divided by that, and then you, add, you subtract that from that, but it becomes a minus, a minus, it becomes a plus. So you end up with 100 divided by 22-ish. It gives an answer, which I have, of uh, 4.56. Four point, how many decimal places have I got? Five, six. For, and the units of course is amps because it's current you see that that was easy dead quick dead quick once we got there so I've drawn it out again just to clar uh, clear things up a little bit make it a bit tidier so what we're going to do now is we're going to now that we know the impedance of this circuit so looking into this circuit we've now got the impedance remember Z's impedance and it's a combination of the resistor the inductor and the capacitance Okay, so looking into this circuit, we know that Z is this. We can now use Ohm's law to, to calculate what the current is flowing in this circuit. So the, the volts, so that's volts divided by the impedance, and volts is 100 volts. Okay, with a zero phase angle, because that's a reference point. If it, had a, if it did have a phase angle, then, it, well, it can do, but we'd have to take that into account. That's our impedance. So from that, I can now work out the current which is 100, if you remember your, again, you've got to make sure you can do the complex numbers. If you can remember how to divide in complex numbers in polar form, uh, it's 100 divided by the 21.91, which gives me that 4.56. So that's the amplitude of the, of the, ampi of the uh, ampage going into that circuit. This is the phase angle. So it's now out of phase. Okay, and that comes from subtracting that away from that, which is the standard method for doing division by polar. So a minus and minus gives me a plus. So it makes it into a plus 83.13. So that's straightforward, nice and easy. Once we've got um, done the hard bit, which is basically finding the impedance, it gets fairly straightforward. Now, out of interest, let's have a look and see what the 
the, imped uh, the ampages across each bit. So we'll call this uh, ZC here, across here. And actually, we're going to look at that would imply voltage. And what we're really going to do is we're going to look at the current flowing through there and the current flowing through here. And we'll call this one ZL, even though it's RL actually, because it's got a resistor in there, but we'll just call it RL for some simplicity. Okay, so if I look at this bit, I again apply Ohm's law, so the impedance, the current across the capacitor is going to simply be that capacitance value, uh, sorry, that voltage divided by that resistance of that which we calculated before was 19.88. Okay, and that gives me a figure. If I get my, just grab my notes, is this the right one? Yep, that gives me a figure of 5.03 amps. Okay, so that's actually higher than I supply, according to this. Note it's got a phase angle. What would the phase angle be? Well, it's not fighting against a resistor or an inductor, so it's just going to be the basic rule, which is it, uh, the current trails by 90 de uh, leads by 90 degrees, so it's going to be plus 90 degrees. Okay. Let's have a look at Z across here, uh, through here, shall I say. Uh, the current through here, I'll get right in the end. IL is again 100 divided by the impedance of that part of the circuit um, which is uh, I need to do it's 91.062 for this part but I've got to take into account the resistor as well because the 90 degrees out of phase with one another so it's the resultant of the two so I've then got to use I'll just do it over here XL so it's XL and the resistor so I could say that, strictly speaking. So it's the, um, again, Pythagoras comes in. So 100 squared plus 91.106 squared gives me an answer of 135.28. Okay, so that's what I'm going to have over here. 1, 3, 5.28 which equals 0 0.7392 okay amps now the phase angle of that to get the phase angle of that I would need to do the inverse of tan of these two values because it's got uh, if I did it as a phase it's got 100 that way and 90, uh, what did I say, 91 that way. Okay, and it's the resultant of that. So, so we need to find that angle there. Okay, that suggests it's gonna be a minus angle, and in fact, of course, it will be because it's minus 91, because the inductor's trailing. 91.106 divided by uh, one th um, 100, I'll get there, 100, gives me a phase angle of minus 42. That seems about right because it's, uh, this is slightly longer than this, but not much. So it's going to be fairly near 45 degrees, but less than 45. So minus 42.335 degrees. And I'll just stress there that it's uh, the inductor, the current trails the, uh, the resistor. Okay, so therefore it's going to be a, it's going to be this way. So it's going to be a minus resultant that we're looking for, which should, for angle. So it's minus forty two point three three five. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. Let's have a think though. We got our resultant for our circuit to be this. And yet, if I add these two values together, 
5.03 and 0.739. There's no way they add up to that, even if I subtract that from there. It gets closer, but it's still not right. So why is that? And it's quite straightforward. It's because of that phase. So if I was to draw this, let's see if I can sque just squeeze it in here. So if I was to draw this on a phaser diagram, I would have, um, let's say, I'd have uh, 5.03 amps going that way, 90 degrees, okay? And I would have at 42 degrees, a lot, whoops, a smaller length of that, which is 0 0.739. If I round it a little bit, okay? So the resultant is a vector of those two, a resultant of those two. So basically the easiest way is to take that off there and put that, let's do it in a different colour. So, if I make a resultant of that by putting that on there, okay, that would be my resultant actually. And if I do the maths of that, or draw it on graph paper, which should be a longer, harder way, I would get the same result as that. So you can actually sort of feel, feels about right, doesn't it, that, because you've taken that f much off the distance that way, and that angle does look about a plus 83, give or take. So what I'm saying there is it feels right, and f things feeling right, looking right is an important part of any, any of these things, it's a good test. But there's another thing, another aspect, if I converted these two results, and this result, back into rectangle form, then that would that point there would represent one, and that would represent one. Add them together, one of them's a minus. I would actually end up with that as well. Well, I'd end up with um, I'd end up with that in a rectangle form, and then I'd have to convert it to polar to check my answer. Okay, I hope that made sense. I'll say that again. If I convert these two values, that one there, no, not that one there, that one there, and that one there into rectangle form of polar, add the two numbers together. I would end up with an answer, and then when I convert that answer back to polar, it'd be that answer. Okay, so that's the beauty of, of complex numbers. It gives us a way of doing things. It's all very logical, it's all based on a grid system, uh, X and Y coordinates, so it's all, it's all going to work. So it's all fairly straightforward there. Okay, so I hope that was of uh, some use to you, and I th hope that, that makes things a bit clearer for you on some of these questions we have to deal with in ele electrical electronic engineering. And now you can see why we like complex numbers and where the, why they play a part in, in electrical engineering.